Today, they delivered another win for businesses that are pushing employees into arbitration, unfortunately. Now, this ruling was written by Justice Samuel Alito, and it essentially kills a very progressive law coming out of California known as the Private Attorneys General Act. And that's something California legislature adopted in 2004 to protect protect the rights of workers. Now, before we dive into the opinion itself, let's talk a little bit about this act. So this is what we know per the LA Times. The Private Attorneys General Act said lawyers may file claims against an employer seeking penalties on behalf of a group of employees and for multiple violations of the labor code. Three fourths of the money recovered is paid to the state. Lawmakers said the state's labor laws were going unforced even when workers were cheated out of their wages or not paid extra for overtime work. They said the state did not have enough staff on of its own to police industries where labor law violations are the most rampant, including agriculture, garment, construction, car wash, and restaurants. And so even though there was a short staffing issue in California and laws were being violated by employers, well, the US Supreme Court decided that they still weren't down for what California was trying to do. So let's look at what the case at issue is. So the case before the court was Viking River Cruises versus Moriana. It arose when Angie Moriana quit her job in 2017 as a sales agent in Los Angeles for Viking River Cruises and alleged she did not receive her last paycheck on time. She then became the lead plaintiff in a private suit alleging multiple violations on behalf of a large group of Viking employees. Now Viking objected and said that she and the other employees had agreed to arbitrate. Any dispute arising out of or relating to your employment. Moreover, they had waived any right to any class collective or private attorney general action. So the Supreme Court in reviewing whether that it was lawful for her to proceed with these claims underneath this act or under this act, the Supreme Court ended up siding with the cruise liner, holding that the Federal Arbitration Act overrides California law. Now this is what the court noted. California is the only state to authorize such private suits as a means of enforcing its labor laws, the justice has said. But by doing so, the state allows employees to escape the binding arbitration agreement they signed when they were hired. And oddly enough, the majority of the justices signed on to this one. It was about eight to one. That's right, the only person who ended up dissenting was Justice Clarence Thomas. And the only reason he did dissent is because he doesn't think that federal arbitration, that the act applies in state courts. So it wasn't because he was looking to, he was looking to look out for uh, workers in California. No, it was on a whole different principle. But that essentially tells you, you know, if Sotomayor is backing the inapplicability of this law here, even though it does uplift workers, that it probably did not necessarily jive with the law itself. What do you think, Wolves? I mean, I to me, this jibes with what the Supreme Court exists to do, which is reify and reaffirm the power of capital interests. Like these people are always going aside on the side of business. I think, you know, traditionally conservative judges. Uh, they didn't really bother with the culture war type of stuff, like the Roe v. Wade type of stuff. Um, they they usually would leave that kind of stuff alone. Um, and you know, this this is exactly the kind of case that the Supreme Court lives for um, to basically make sure that at every turn uh, that the money, the capitalists. Are protected, so I'm not surprised that they would, you know, strike down a state law. Even though, you know, just the other day they were like, "Well, whatever state wants to come up with abortion sanctions, they should be able to do that, no matter what the federal statute is." Um, so this this shouldn't surprise anybody. This is what this body honestly lives to do. Yeah, and the thing is, it's like. Okay, so as a litigator, I appreciate the fact that even if you're looking to help people, that there are rules and that they do need to be applied and they do need to be followed so it can have consistency there. At the same time, you know, we've seen SCOTUS time after time act like the rules didn't exist. They talk precedent, but then when they want to stray from it, they'll create and manufacture and bastardize anything they want to to get the result that they want. So while I appreciate that in this instance, they did apply the rules. They did apply the Federal Arbitration Act and how it does apply, even if it means that California workers end up suffering. I can appreciate that if it were done consistently. But by virtue of the fact that this court is, I should say the right wing leaning element of this court is looking to reshape our nation regardless of what precedent is. 
and want to apply the rules whenever it suits them. That's when I'm just like, no, this this doesn't work. You call audibles all the time. Like you are not you are not abiding by the rules. And so I still have no confidence in you whatsoever. Yeah, and it's hard to believe that if <laughs> the shoes were reversed and it was basically the employer side that was being stiffed by this law, it's hard to believe that these Supreme Court justices would have come to this opinion. I, I find that damn near impossible to believe, honestly. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.